guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Anissa and I make videos on money and personal finance while documenting my journey to bus life. And in today's video, I am super excited to talk about one of my two favorite things, bus life versus van life. I want to talk about the pros and cons of each because they both have a lot of benefits and some drawbacks, but of course it all just depends on you and what you want out of your nomad lifestyle. So I have been looking into van life, bus life, all the different lives <laughs> for a long time, I mean years. Um, so I've done a lot of research and in this video I want to share some of what I've found. This is not an exhaustive list of the benefits and drawbacks of van life versus bus life, but they're both two very similar and yet very different ways to travel and live on the road. So hopefully some of what I share today will help someone else out there who is doing research and trying to decide whether they want to purchase a bus to convert or a van to convert and uh, help you to make that choice. All right, first comparison is stealth. When I think about stealth, not being noticed on the road, not drawing too much attention to yourself where you don't want it, I have to say van life is probably a better choice because vans are a lot more common to see on the street, on the road, on the highway, in parking lots versus a 40 foot school bus. People who want to travel to cities, say Chicago, or people who are very conscious of being able to park into regular parking spots, vans are a great solution because they, they fit that bill. There are buses that can do that too, like a short bus, you could fit that into a regular parking spot, but it's a lot harder and it's still a lot more noticeable. You'll notice a huge shuttle bus parked outside of an apartment complex or parked outside of somebody's house a lot faster than you would notice um, a van. Not that you wouldn't notice a van, but you would notice it faster if it was a bus. All right, next comparison, space. What's gonna give you the most square footage for your money? For this, I have to say buses will give you the best bang for your buck as far as space goes. In general, and this is not a rule, but in general, buses tend to have a lot more space uh, than vans, and I'm talking width and height, as well as length. There are a lot more length options for buses. They can range anywhere from 12 feet to 40 feet, so you can find a bus that fits well within that range, whether you want a super short bus, to a medium length 25, 26 foot bus, to a slightly longer 30 to 35 footer, and then what's commonly or most common, the max length, about 40 feet. You have a lot of options. You've got options for vans too. There are a lot of different wheelbases. There are even different heights. You can have the six foot height, uh, six foot height vans plus an extra six inches sometimes but buses have the added benefit of roof raises. Roof raises are essentially where you take a vehicle, you kind of slice it in the middle, and then you hoist it up, and then you add a piece of sheet metal so that the ceiling height is now, you know, for a bus, it's typically about six feet without a roof raise. With a roof raise, you could go anywhere from an extra six inches to an extra foot. So it's ideal for taller people. I have not seen a roof raise on a van before. Now, if you have, leave it down in the, the comments below. I would love to see what you guys have found. But in general, I've only seen roof raises on buses, which is perfect if you're a taller person. So if you're a guy, guys usually want to be able to stand up right in their home. <laughs> Anybody does, but for guys, it's really, uh, common to see that they're gonna need the roof raised because they're usually taller than women. So when it comes to space, I gotta give it up for the buses. Go schoolies. All right, cost. Now this is a big one because you wanna get the most bang for your buck, right? Now in my research, I have found that school buses cost way less than most sprinter vans or just vans period. Unless you've got some kind of a hookup where you can get the van for a lot cheaper, 
buses tend to be a lot less expensive. So I found that buying a used bus costs less than buying a used van of a similar height. So I'm talking like six feet high. So that's what I found in my research on Facebook Marketplace and on uh, public surplus sale websites. And I think there are some reasons for this. So the first is that vans are just in higher demand. There's a lot more that you could do with a van. Speaking of, of course you can convert it, but then there are maintenance men, maintenance workers who use vans to move around. Um, lots of businesses use vans and shuttles for different things. Whereas with a school bus or even a city bus, there's kind of one use for that. So the cost tends to be lower for a bus because there just isn't quite as much demand. Which is good news if you're looking to do a conversion. Now I have heard that the cost of buses is going up just because the popularity of bus life is growing, which is great. Um, but it hasn't grown from what I've seen to be more than two to five thousand dollars for a completely intact off the school lot bus. That means you still got all the seats in it. But if somebody's done the work of taking the seats out and they've done any kind of work on the bus, then it's gonna cost more. And that's similar to vans as well. A van that's got all the seats in it that um, hasn't been converted at all is going to cost less than a van that someone's removed the seats and started building it out. Still in my experience, a van costs more than a bus. So it's not just the cost to purchase the vehicle up front when you're considering the overall cost of buying a bus or buying a van to convert. So you also want to pay attention to the cost of the conversion, the cost of actually building it out, and the cost to maintain the vehicle. But I found with buses, they run on diesel engines, they're big machines to move, and so you're probably going to get a lot less mileage per gallon versus a van that's significantly smaller. And that's gonna show up in how much you spend in gas every month. It's gonna cost you more per mile to get your bus moving than it will cost for a van. And when it comes to converting the vehicles, this is gonna completely depend on you, of course, but just thinking about how much more space you're gonna have in a bus, that's more space you're gonna have to fill. That's more insulation, that's more flooring, that's more roofing. Even if you don't actually put furniture in that space, you're gonna have to consider those things and the cost to build it out. So when you look at cost up front, when you're actually buying the vehicle, a bus is gonna cost you less than a van, but over the long term, it really could vary depending on how you drive and how you choose to build out your rig. All right, speed. So how fast can you get where you wanna go when you're comparing these two? As much as I love driving, it's very relaxing for me. I don't always wanna spend all day, eight, nine plus hours on the road. Sometimes you just wanna to get to your destination. So which of these is gonna get you there faster? I gotta give it up to vans for this one. Vans are smaller, lighter vehicles compared to buses. So they'll get a lot further faster. But there's another reason why buses are a generally slower option, and that's because a lot of school buses, now I'm really speaking to federally uh, commissioned school buses, they have on them what's called a governor. And a governor is a device that's included in the mechanism that restricts how fast a vehicle can go at top speed. So for the United States, I think it generally hovers around 50 miles per hour on the road. And that's pretty slow when you think about highway speed. If the highway is, if the highway speed limit is 70 miles per hour and you, you're topping out at 50, it's not quite as fast. So a van is going to get you where you want to go a lot faster than a bus will. And that's not across the board. You've got other types of buses that don't have governors on them. This is often city buses or shuttle buses. These typically can go regular speeds. But if you're looking to go the school bus route, that's something to consider. Your bus could have a governor on it. Unless you can get it removed by a mechanic, you might not be going quite as fast as you would like to. All right, next comparison, safety. 
Now, I would say these are about the same. I've seen videos of people talking about safety for buses as well as for vans. If I have to give an award to one or the other, I would give safety to vans versus buses. But that doesn't mean that buses aren't safe. The reason I would give it to vans is because buses come with these special double doors. At least school buses come with these doors that are actually really easy to get into. You can kind of push your way through the doors, which is kind of odd because they're carrying children. You would think they would have a more secure bus. But nonetheless, they're actually pretty easy to get into. So I've seen a lot of conversions where people will either weld those two doors together to make it one door and then attach a lock, or they remove both those doors completely and replace it with um, a regular RV door or a house door even. Vans generally come with locking systems, locking mechanisms for the front, back and the side doors if you have side doors on your van and that makes them in my opinion kind of a safety ready option but doors alone are not going to keep you safe on the road you're still going to have to think about where you park your vehicle who you're around those things are still going to matter no matter what rig you're in all right last comparison drivability i would give drivability to a van because when you think about it, and I mentioned some of this earlier as well, a van is a lot smaller generally than a bus. Now, if you're not used to driving these vehicles, like honestly, I'm not used to driving these vehicles, it's still gonna be a learning curve for you. But think about maneuvering a 25 foot van versus a 40 foot school bus. You see, I predict that it would be a whole lot easier to move that van than it would be to move that bus. But there are people who do it all the time. I mean, school bus drivers, hello. But there are also regular people who have done their conversions and who are living in them and they're able to maneuver just fine on regular highways, onto mountains, into the desert, and they do just fine. Just make sure you've got good tires that your car is in good shape or your vehicle is in good shape and you'll be fine. All right, so I hope that was helpful in helping you decide, okay, bus life, van life, should I buy a bus, should I buy a van? That's by no means an exhaustive list of comparisons, pros and cons of van life versus bus life or purchasing a van versus purchasing a bus. The lifestyle that you're gonna get is still gonna be amazing irregardless. It's just that your parking, your maneuvering, even your price is going to depend on what vehicle you purchase. But when it comes to bus life and van life, they both involve custom conversions. You're going to get an amazing lifestyle on the road. They're both great for minimal living and they both generally have diesel engines. So you'll get that benefit of a longer lasting vehicle. All right, so tell me in the comments below, what do you think? What are some pros and cons for you of van life versus bus life? Which would you choose? Would you rather live in a van or a bus? I'll tell you, I have already decided that I would like a bus. The cost and the size, they're both really attractive to me, but honestly, I love all of them. I love seeing people's rigs, whether it's in a huge vehicle, something small. I've even seen teardrop videos and just salivating over the idea of doing it myself. So leave it a comment down below and tell me what you think. Also comment on what other videos you would like me to make in the future. And while you're down there, please like, share, and subscribe. It would really help me out. I'm new on YouTube and I would really love that support. All right, that's all for me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm super excited to have you on this journey with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.